The rash man has, if, if it delays, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not be late. The rash man has no integrity, but the just man, because of his faith, shall live. Words that we read in the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Our Lord raised up in the times of the Old Testament certain prophets who admonished the Israelites. These same prophets wept over the injustices that were committed before their eyes, and uh, they lamented to the Lord, Why, O Lord, do you, you seemingly do nothing about them? They hungered and thirsted for justice, just as we read in the, the Beatitudes given by Jesus, which we read in chapter 5 of the Gospel of St. Matthew. To hunger and thirst for justice is therefore very acceptable in the sight of God. The question is, why does it seem that God sometimes, according to our way of thinking, do nothing about it? We see injustices committed around us, perhaps some very grave ones, and yet God seems to wait, to bide his time, not to act immediately, to permit injustice to be committed. And yet our Lord promises through the prophet that justice will indeed be fulfilled, but in the Lord's time and not in ours. For the Lord wishes also to bring our good work, our work of holiness to perfection. So the Lord sees things as we do not see them, We are, of course, uh, tempted to uh, right things ourselves, to uh, make things right in the world, Uh, and uh, perhaps imprudently at times to be the executors of justice in situations that demands that our Lord uh, be the one to right the scales. It doesn't mean, of course, that we should not be working for justice. Of course, we should be working for justice insofar as it depends upon us. The first justice that has to be established, however, is the justice that ought to reign in our hearts. So often, men and women look to establish justice in the social order without paying enough attention to whether justice reigns in their hearts. And that justice in their hearts would be established if they listened to the voice of their conscience, to the voice of the Lord, that speaks to them according to their conscience, to write things according to our Lord, that they will be able to stand fast before our Lord. If you and I first looked for that justice, then uh, it would not be so hard then to address the problems of injustice that we see around us. And that is the first justice that our Lord wishes for us to establish that, which is in our hearts, and that does depend upon us. Sometimes we can do nothing about the injustice that we see around us, but the injustice that reigns in our heart, we can do something about that. If we have failed to give the other his due, then we can make restitution, we can make reparation. We can uh, make acts of reparation to our Lord for the injustice that we have committed against him. We can go to the sacrament of confession if we have offended him in such a way that we perhaps have lost the state of grace. See, all these things, those lie within our power. So why don't we act on those first? If we truly were to hunger and thirst for justice, should we not hunger and thirst that justice be established in our hearts before our Lord? So that is the first thing, and so often that is neglected. Is it any wonder then that so much injustice reigns in the social order? Even so, let us suppose that indeed we have established justice in our hearts, that we have, we comport ourselves rightly before our Lord, and yet the problem of injustice in the social order remains. What then do we do? We do what we can, but then leave the rest to our Lord. The prophets obeyed our Lord when our Lord told them to speak words of admonishment to his people Israel, that's what they did. When it is that Israel continued to disobey, to uh, execute their own designs before our Lord, then it was up to our Lord to mete out the punishment that was due to 
in that way write the scales. The prophets did their part and then they waited on the Lord. And that is what our Lord is uh, talking about through the prophet here, that if we wait for the Lord, then surely the Lord will establish justice. Our Lord does not fail to keep any one of his promises and he will surely establish justice. And how can we be sure that he will do so? Because he established the greatest work of justice a greatest work of justice of them all, and that is a work of mercy. He sent his only begotten Son, who took upon himself, suffered in his body all the punishment due for your sins and for mine. And he did this because you and I could never pay the price for the offenses that we have committed against our Lord. The price that you and I must pay to our Lord for the offenses that we have committed against him is too great for us to pay ourselves. And so God in his great mercy, not dispensing of his justice by any means, but precisely because he is just, he is merciful. Because mercy is but yet the other face of justice. And so God in his great mercy sends his only begotten son who can pay the price and does. And paying the price opens up the possibility that you and I, cooperating in a very small way with paying the price to the degree that we can do so, so we can take advantage of the righteousness that our Lord hands out to us anew, that he hands out to the world at large. But he asks us that we follow in his footsteps, that we wait, that he will establish justice in the wisest way, in the most perfect way. So sometimes we will have to suffer injustice. For what reasons we might have to are best known to our Lord. Maybe it's in expiation for our sins. Maybe it's because by our penances we will be fit instruments for the conversion and sanctification of many other souls. The point is that our Lord knows best. And if we follow his designs, we will be doing the best. At the heart of it, then, is his faith. The just man, because of his faith, shall live. So if we grow impatient, if we refuse to wait for the Lord to do his part, we learn from the prophet that it is because of our lack of faith. We do not yet have a great enough faith. Indeed, this is what our Lord points out in the gospel regarding those disciples who could not cast out a certain demon. He said, because of your lack of faith, you could not do this. If we had faith the size of a mustard seed, would we not wait for the justice of our Lord to be established? Would we not know what it is that we must do? Would we not pay close attention that every justice is established in our heart? Would we not be willing to suffer any punishment, any penance our Lord wishes us to undergo, either in expiation for our sins or for those of others? Yes, all these things we would be willing to do if that faith grows in us. Our Lord does not leave us orphans in this regard. He gives us, as our mother, our spiritual mother, one whose faith reached its fullness in this life. That faith that was manifest at the Annunciation, that faith that was manifest when she saw her son dying on the cross, offering himself for our salvation, uniting herself to him, for that same purpose, knowing by faith that he would rise again. And she wishes us to have a share of that very same faith, faith which she had when she walked the face of the earth. Only then will we have that sort of faith that permits us to wait upon the Lord, to realize that the vision will press on to its fulfillment, that the Lord will not disappoint. Praise be Jesus and Mary.